Good morning, and here we are Saturday, and welcome to another study on the whole area of the headship of Christ from the book of Colossians, and we're going to talk about the mystery of Christ in you. Or, we put it the other way, Paul is going to talk to us about the mystery of Christ in us. And we, I know down way back when we talked about this word mystery, but we're going to talk about it again as Paul talks about how the mystery of Christ has been revealed or has been made known to us. And so we can thank God for that. So thank you for joining us. Pray that your day will be good and that you will be able to go forward. For those of you over in our warmer culture, for some strange reason, it's April 2nd and we're getting some snow again this morning. And so it kind of comes one day warm, one day cold, <laughs> whatever it may be. But we're thankful that we have a good home and that we can just continue to love our Lord as he continues to love us. So let's go over to Colossians chapter 1 verses 24 to 29 and begin to look at this whole area of the mystery of Christ in you. And I think that's so important today because a lot of times people think, well, how does Christ, you know, who came in the flesh, who now is in the heavens, now dwell in us? Well, that's the uniqueness of who Jesus Christ is. So at verse 24 of chapter 1 of Colossians, we are working our way through and we're going to look at various things about what Paul is going to remind the Colossian church about and us as individual disciples. And probably the first line is really an unusual line because he says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. And I don't think any of us would have that first, first part of the verse underlined and say, I now rejoice in the sufferings that I have for you. You know, it got me thinking that there's a lot of people around that probably we feel bad for or in some ways that we hurt for. Well, Paul says, you know, I rejoice in the sufferings, in my sufferings for you. I know what he's saying because he's in prison and he's going through difficult times. But he's realizing that those difficult times is what's making him become more mature in Christ, to walk deeper in Christ, those difficult times. And I can understand that. I've gone through difficult times off and on throughout my life and probably will yet to come. But it's those times, those valleys, that when you can't really see everything clearly and don't always understand how it all comes together, sometimes those are also, right at that moment, they're mountaintops in your growth for the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul was saying, I rejoice for you in my sufferings while I'm here in Rome in prison because it's bringing about a deeper understanding and a deeper depth in the word of God. I think in my own personal life and for Carl Wynn and I, I know this last two years has not been easy with the COVID and everything else, but I can also say that we've gone deeper in the Lord and the Lord has gone deeper in us because of it. And his word has been growing and continuing to grow in our lives. So he says, now I rejoice in the sufferings for you and, and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. So Paul was saying, those areas that I don't really didn't really understand what Christ went through for me, the afflictions that he went through for me, Paul is saying, now I'm beginning to understand them and I'm now beginning to get filled up with the knowledge of what it means to walk in these areas of afflictions, to walk in these places. You know, afflictions gives the idea of a condition or a pain or a trauma, as it were. Paul is saying, I now know and I now even understand. See, Paul's goal throughout many of his prayers well, that I may know him and the fellowship of his sufferings. And, you know, Paul was wanting to, to know and have the fullness of God in him, working through him, the power of Jesus Christ, anointing him and helping him to teach. 
And so Paul, when he saw himself in prison, going through those deep, deep valleys and struggles and probably cold and dampness and without food and sometimes and, and sometimes maybe nobody around to help him, you know, the, the trauma that must have gone on there. And he was probably thinking, wow, now I'm experiencing more of the depths of what Christ went through for me. And now Paul was saying, because of that, I'm now experiencing that and being able to share that with you with others. I have found out through my journey with the Lord that sometimes these deep afflictions, that is at those times we need to be looking around and saying, okay, Lord, I'm walking through here. And it's not just for me, but a lot of times it's for me to be able to share with somebody else, to be able to help them in their deep times of afflictions. So that's what Paul was saying. I'm being filled up in this time, uh, that area of his life, that part of his cup, the area of afflictions that, that not only he has gone through, but also that Christ went through. He is now beginning to understand, and he's been able to share that with the churches, with the churches like Ephesus and, and Philippi, Colossae, and others that he has been able to share and write letters to. And we've been a blessing. Can you imagine if he didn't go through the depths of those sufferings? We probably, who knows whether we would have the book of Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and Philemon, those books that have brought us into a greater depth of understanding of what the body of Christ is all about and what we're studying now, the headship of Christ. He says, is lacking an affliction for of Christ for the sake of his body, which is his church. So Paul is saying, I'm going through these challenges because it is now helping and being used by God in his body, which is his church. I mean, I don't know if we've ever thought about that or even comprehended that some of the valleys, and all of us have gone through some valleys, uh, all of us have gone through maybe not some of the depths of what people are going through in Ukraine right now or in Myanmar. Carl Wynn was telling me in her, our home city in Myanmar yesterday, there was a number of bombings and things that are going on over the last couple of days. And, you know, and I was just thinking, boy, we, you know, we walk those markets, we go to get groceries every day, you know, and there's bombings and people are being killed and the same thing going on, you know, uh, in Ukraine, and I'm thinking of all those pastors and people that we know, to, for them, it must be how great of affliction that they're going through. But that depth of the affliction that they're walking through and experiencing with Jesus Christ, knowing his heart is opening up a door so that they can minister that understanding of the fullness of Christ to others. You know, sometimes I... I in fact, I have learned in my life some of the difficulties I went through as a youth, as a young man, and then some of the difficulties that I went through with Irene's sickness and things like that. I found out God used every one of them to help me to understand more fullness about him and to be a channel so that I could take that which I learned during those valleys of affliction or heartaches or struggles or trials and pass it on, and, and God has used it to bless other people. Much of what we do every morning comes out of where we have walked in the past. And so Paul is reminding it, and he's saying it's for the sake of the body. God takes us through different things. And I think sometimes we think, it. well, I've gone through that. That's just personally for me what has happened for me. But you know, I have learned that what we go through is not just for us. It's also for the sake of the body and for the church, which is the church. And that's why we need to have opportunities to give testimony. Opportunities, you know, uh, to have a, you know, if we can't have an evening service of uh, preaching, why not have an evening service of testimonies? Genuine testimonies, not just the same old testimony that sometimes people give for 20 years, but fresh and anointed testimonies that when people are going through afflictions and going through heartaches and trial like Paul was, it was for the growth of the church, 
for the body of Christ. Are you seeing that today? So a lot of these things we think, or oh, they're just for us, or we've just for us that we walk through. Paul was saying, this time that I've been in prison is not only for my growth, but it's for the growth of the body, the church. Isn't that amazing? We don't think that way. But whatever you may be facing and going through today, I bet you there's other people within the body of believers that if you would give testimony and share, it would help them. It would help them not to feel so alone. It would help them uh, to wonder, well, are they, are they've done something sinful or they've done something wrong or, you know, whatever it may be, where they could just realize, no, this is the valley where that side of who we are in Christ is being filled up and everything that gets filled up is for the purpose of pouring out. You know, often we don't fill up a glass of water just to sit there for days and days and days. It's there to be either poured out or drank. Otherwise, it becomes stagnant. It becomes dead. It becomes full of bugs and mildew and everything else. No, it's filled up so it can be poured out. And so Paul was saying, you know, I'm being filled up during these times of afflictions. You know, I wonder how one of us could say that in these two years of lockdown and challenges, that whether we could say and give testimony, I've been being filled up during these times. Now, that's probably a thought that's never crossed by your mind, because I don't think I ever thought about it until yesterday and today, too. You know, that these valleys and trials and challenges that we're going through are filling up a side of us that will be able to minister one to another in the body of Christ. What do you think about that? You say, oh, Pastor Jim, you know, you're reading more in. No, Paul is trying to say it. these afflictions, you know, that uh, I'm being filled up, that have happened to my flesh, are for the sake of his, his body, which is his body, just to clarify, which is the church. And then he goes on, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship of God, which was given to me for, for you to fulfill the word of God. So Paul is saying, I'm, I'm being filled up with this, and it's happening because I'm a minister or a servant of the Lord, and according to the stewardship of God. See, we're all stewards. We don't un understand the word stewardship. I mean, we, we sometimes under understand the word steward, uh, or stewardess on the airplane, but it's the same idea. The, the stewardess is a person who is entrusted with our welfare and 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 uh, to serve us, to help us, you know, in our times of need on the airplane. While we become that, we become stewardess of what God has entrusted us. We don't own it. It's not something that we uh, say belongs to us. But we're now taking that which has been given to us and becoming good stewards of it so that we can serve others. So Paul was saying, you know, these afflictions and sufferings I've come through as a minister or as a servant, it has helped me to become a good steward or of stewardship of God, which was given to me for you. See, again, Again, underline that word for you. What we go through in our challenges is for the body. What we go through as ministers is as stewards. We've been given something to take that which God has given us and serve others. And Paul was saying, what I've gone on through and what I, I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I am who I am, not for me, not for my own prestige. It's for you. And that's unique. It's unique. We need to think about that much of what we go through as disciples in the body of Christ is for others. Can you agree with that? Have you ever thought about that? You know, we're not just an island to ourselves. But Paul is saying, I minister and it was given to me for you. To do what? To fulfill the word of God. That these things that are going on in our lives and around us and in us are there to, to make us complete and full in the word of Christ, in who Christ is. Isn't that beautiful? Have you ever thought about that before? That that's going on, 
that what is going on in us is for you. So, hey, what's going on in my life right now for all of those of you who are watching in the next 24 hours, what's going on in my life and how I wrestle through it and deal with it is not only for me, but is also for you. And what you're going on and struggling with is also, you know, not only for you, but it's also for me. That's why sometimes when you message or you make little comments, your words encourage me. And I'm hoping that my words through the Bible are encouraging you. So he says, you know, that the word of God. Then he goes on. So what, why is all this happening? So that the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to us, his saints. See, can you imagine that there was a time throughout the history of the world that a lot of things that we're talking about today were a complete mystery to them? They didn't understand what God was all about. You know, they understood little pieces of the puzzle. And God will give them a prophetic word or use a prophet or something in their lives to help them to get a beggar understand. But they walked in darkness. And it was because of the light of Jesus Christ coming and, and shedding light on darkness that we could begin to understand the fullness of God and not only understand the fullness of God, but understand who God is. Jesus has said, to, you know, many times a disciple, well, who said to Jesus, who is the father? And Jesus said, just look at me. Because I and the father am one. Just look at us and you will see the father. And so he's being revealed, even though it's been hidden for ages and, and for generation has now been revealed. And that idea revealed is to show, to discover to make known, wow, it's it's being revealed. And so Paul could say that because he was looking at, okay, I was a minister, yeah, I was a Pharisee, I was a Saul, then I became Paul, and you know, I didn't understand, you know, I'm I'm being shipwrecked, I'm being beaten, I'm being put in prison, and now I'm in jail in Rome. I didn't understand the full mystery of God and the full mystery of what God was doing in Paul was for the body and for each other. And that was what was being revealed. Jesus was revealing the fullness of who he is as God to us so that we could understand a little bit better who we are and be able to take that which we have given, been given by God and give it to others. Notice what it goes on. Verse 27, To them God willed to make known that what are the riches of his glory of the mystery among the Gentiles? God had a plan. You know, he didn't just have a plan for the Jewish people, but he had a plan right from the very beginning of creation for all people. And he was now, through Paul, through his struggles, through his trials, was revealing the fullness of Jesus Christ, not only to the Jews, which often opposed it, but also to the Gentiles. Paul said over it, there, that, that my brothers are not going to listen, then I'm going to go out and tell the Gentiles. And maybe by telling the Gentiles, the Jews will become jealous. Because they will see the working of God through the Gentiles and say, well, yeah, that's our God. What's going wrong? And well, what needed to get right is they needed to understand Jesus as their Messiah. And so... He was making known to them uh, the, the God's will. And that's unique. We've been talking about that every day. We need to be praying each day, what is God's will for my life? And God's will for Paul's life at that moment was to be in prison and to be writing letters to the Ephesians and the Colossians and, and the Phil, uh, Filipino church. And yeah. Philippian church, maybe the Filipino church too. <laughs> Philippian church. My wife is correcting me again. Thanks, honey. And, you know, we need to know, understand the will of God for, he says, the will to make known what are the riches of his glory. So, not only to see what we can have, 
but to see more in the heavenlies the riches of his glory, the fullness of his glory, his will by sending his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross was there to show us the riches of his glory to the Gentiles. When the Gentiles were told this message and, and, and told what Jesus had done, do you know since then to now, you know, one third of the world in some form or fashion have, have become believers in Christ Jesus. That's a lot of people. For when you think about 2,000 years ago, there was just the 12 and then it became a handful and then the 5,000 and the 3,000 and others, you know, and the church began to spread throughout all the known world and it spread throughout all the known world through great persecution and trials. But people began to see that the full mystery of God was being revealed and that God's will was being revealed and that mystery which the Gentiles had no clue about we're now beginning to understand. And the mystery was this. He goes on. What is the mystery among the Gentiles? Which is Christ in you? That was the mystery. That what was Paul was trying to teach the church. And that's why we titled it today. Our, our, our talk is the mystery of Christ in you. I don't think. I don't think. Can I say it again? I don't think we understand the full mysteries of Christ in us. We don't see the bigger picture. We can only see that what we want to see. But Paul was trying to share with the, the church, the Colossian church, the picture is much bigger. And those things that you don't understand, that if you would just meditate and wait upon the Lord and get into his word and let his word get into you, you will see that much of those things that were mysterious will become revealed. There's a lot of things I don't understand, but in my journey, God has been revealing them and revealing them and revealing them. And that's what causes us to grow. That's what causes us to mature. And even though I don't understand some of those deep valleys that I've walked through and some of those heartaches that I walked through, remember we have a saying in English that hindsight is better than foresight. Sometimes when you go back and look back at what you've gone through, you will see the greater mysteries of God being fulfilled. Each one of you are going through some type of affliction or a challenge or a heartache or a pain. And we've got to stop at and stop asking the question, why? In the sense of, you know, is God beating up on me or making life challenging for me? Or is he trying to fulfill a greater mystery in your life that will cause you to even be deeper in Jesus Christ than you ever have been before? He wants to reveal even more to you the fullness. Sometimes when you look at your children, oh God, why? Or you look at your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, or you look at your wife, or you look at your husband, or you look at people in the church, you know, and you look around and you say, why, 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 why? And maybe you start realizing the reason is, is because God is trying to reveal more in you of the mysteries of him so that you can be stronger in him, so that you can be a vessel of a steward for his glory to those around you. That's the part that we don't grasp, that he is entrusting things into us that were once a mystery, so that we can be channels of revelation of the fullness of God to others. Are you getting it? And that's why he calls it the riches. You know, we haven't tapped into the full riches of God's glory. We've tapped into a, such a small little part. And then when something goes a little bit of a problem with us, we'll say, Oh, God doesn't love me. God doesn't care. No, what you need to see is that God is taking you deeper. He's revealing more of his mystery to you so that you can reveal more of his presence to the Gentiles, to the ones around about, that you can minister to them. The gospel is not just for you. The picture of the gospel that Jesus told the disciples over and over again, you know me so that you can go out and tell others. It's not for the individual. We're not to be an island, but we're to be proclaimers of the good news of Jesus Christ. 
We are the ones that as we walk through these valleys and trials and begin to understand the fullness of the mysteries of Christ, we are the ones that become ministers of that which we are called to be stewards of so that we can share it with others. Look what he goes on. This is the mystery of the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope. Can you get that? Christ in you right now, when people look at you, or you should understand that we are the hope of Christ's glory here on earth. Now that will really blow you away. You, can say, you would say, well, I'm not very glorious today. But if we understand the full mysteries of God and get filled up in the fullness of what God is wanting to do with us, we will then be to the place that we will show forth the hope of His glory. You know, just as we hope, we need to encourage others to hope in Christ. Amen? Then he goes on and Paul says, Him we preach. This is what Paul's saying. This is what we're saying to the Colossians. This is the guy we preach about. Jesus Christ. Jesus the Savior. Christ the Anointed One. Him we preach. Doing what? Warning every man. Warning every man. Warning every man. I look forward in the next two weeks and the week before Easter, we're going to be out in the mall in Steinbach and we're going to be handing out the Nicodemus booklet. And what are we doing? We're warning every man, to woman, and child to give your life to Jesus Christ. That's what I've been called to be a steward of. That's what you are called to be a steward of. That he fills us up. He, he puts his treasure, his glory in us. And then we need to be good stewards of that. He says... Him we preach, warning every man. But not only warning them, but teaching every man. That's what we're doing every morning. I think, you know, um, Wes McLeod, a friend of mine, kept saying, Jim, don't worry about the numbers of people who are watching and that, but just keep going out, keep proclaiming, keep teaching. Why? Because it keeps pushing back in the spiritual realm, the gates of hell. But we need to be warning every man. We need to be teaching every man. Teaching every man in all wisdom. In all wisdom. I was talking to an older, an older gentleman yesterday. And he was saying, you know, don't stop in the morning. Keep teaching. Keep warning. Why? Because you're helping us to understand a little bit more about the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, so that we can go out as stewards of God and begin to keep proclaiming. So is the wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Can, I don't know if you grasp this. We think that there is no responsibility for those around us. That is wrong. That is false. We are part of a body. And he's saying here is something we need to underline, circle, do everything we need to do it. That we are to warn every man. That we're to teach every man. Why? So we can take those people that God entrusted us with to be stewards of and present them back to Jesus Christ. Have you ever thought about that? I didn't write it. He wrote it. That we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The reason every man, it, it, he's not saying some, he's saying that the goal is of Christ Jesus is that we warn them we teach them so that they will get to the place that we can present them as a blessing back before Christ. Wow, there's some deep thinking going on there, isn't there? You know, people, we got to get out on the highways and byways. We got to keep warning. You know, we got to keep telling. Warn them. And then once you warn them and they say, well, what must, what must we do? Then teach them. You know, you just don't have to have a degree or a full license or a doctorate or anything and say, well, we'll leave all the teaching up to others. No, you get into the Word and let the Word get into you and you teach them. You warn them. Do you know that Timothy and Titus were just young men? They didn't have a doctorate like Paul did. 
They didn't have an MA or a BA. They didn't have any of that. But they had Jesus Christ in them, who is all wisdom, who is all knowledge, who gives all understanding in them. And Paul was saying, because he's in you, then go out and warn others. Warn our children, warn our grandchildren, warn our great-grandchildren, warn our neighbors, whoever it may be, go out on the highways. That's why I can't wait to get out of the mall, because we're fulfilling the scripture. Warn them! And then not only warn them, but give them discipleship tools and things that will help to teach them. Teach them. It's so sad that so many of the Bible schools in Canada are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. We still need them. We still need to have places that we go that we can be taught and trained. Teach them so that we can present every man perfect in Christ. That we, that we, that we can present every man perfect in Christ. Now there comes a responsibility. And that's what stewardship is all about. Wow. Pretty strong today, but that's what we all need to hear, including me, because my role as a disciple of Christ is to warn, to teach, so that we can in turn present them. Is that the scriptures? Can you agree with that? And he goes on. And notice what he says in verse 29. To this end I also labor. Paul says his goal and I'm saying this right now. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to say, Lord, what, what more do we do? Do we write more books? What, write more booklets? How do we get out on the highways? How do we send things? What more would do we do? Well, he's just told us right here. Maybe this is our verse for the rest of the year for all of us. That we warn people, that we teach people so that we can present them and to realize that to this end, I also am a laborer striving according to his working which works in me mightily get this get this is a prophetic word for us today get this we're doing this not in our own strength and our own ability but we're doing it in christ jesus that his end goal is that we may learn, uh, labor and be striving for him according to the workings that he is doing within us and that he's doing it in us mightily. Wow. Also, I don't I don't know what to say. I'm gonna I'm just gonna put here the date, today's date, April second, in my Bible, and say this is the starting point that we need to go to. This is what Paul was trying to say. This is the mystery that we have in Christ, who is in you, that he is the head of the body, and as head of the body. He is in you and you are in him. And as the body, his will, his goal is that you go out and warn people. You go out and teach people so that you can present people. And that we do this, not in our strength, but in his mighty strength. In his mighty power. For what purpose? So that we can glorify Christ Jesus here on earth. Are we getting it? Are we seeing it? I need to play this tape back for me after we're finished. I need to get this from here down to here. You know, a lot of times people are saying to me, well, what's the purpose of my life? What does God want to do with me? How does God want to use me? It's right here in verse 28, actually 27, 28, and 29. This is what we should be laboring for. Not big bank accounts and big stuff and all these things, but where we're, we're to be laboring in such a way that while we're laboring, we're laboring in His mighty power. Why? So that we can warn, teach, and present people to Jesus Christ. Would you say amen to that? Let's pray. Father, wow, you have spoken to my heart in a powerful way again today and reminded me, Lord, that we're doing what we're doing, not just to be busy doing, but that you have made us stewards, that you have made us laborers. And Lord, that, that what you are filling us up with, whether it's challenges or afflictions or things that we're learning more about you, so Lord, that we can go out and warn and teach 
and in, in due time to be able to present those to you for your glory. Oh, Father, I pray that today we'll grasp this teaching and to realize that we're not doing it on our strength or our ability, but we're doing it in your mighty works flowing through us. And so we thank you now for what you continue to do and say to us and what we can learn from the book of Colossians this day. Help us not just to be hearers, but help us to be doers this day. In, in your powerful name, in your mighty name, we pray, Jesus. Amen. Wow. I hope that stirred something up. And I hope that we just don't be here and say, Oh, Pastor Jim, thank you for another good message. But no, I want you to say, Pastor Jim, you have stirred me up today. And now I want to go out and begin to warn, to teach, so that in some way God will bless that we will be able to present others to him. Amen. We love you. Keep on keeping on. And thank God for who you are. And may God bring you to a deeper walk in him this day. Amen. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.